So this question comes up a lot with regard to commercial lines insurance, business insurance. Not so much with uh, personal lines or consumer insurance, but with business insurance, there is a uh, mechanism or segment called excess and surplus lines, sometimes just called surplus lines insurance. And many times clients will ask us, is it bad that this is surplus insurance or excess insurance? It almost sounds like a discount warehouse uh, where you buy damaged goods. Well, with the insurance market, excess and surplus lines serves a very important role. And here's how it works. Insurance companies that provide coverage for businesses have to file a series of forms, which is the actual policies, what they cover. So if you're a company, let's say like Chubb Insurance or Nationwide or Allstate, you have to be licensed in the state where you're writing insurance, which most large companies are licensed in all 50 states. But you also have to file your documents for what's covered on your policies. So if you file for business insurance, you say it's covered for fire or you're covered for um, injury to customers and you have to have all your terms and conditions for your, um, for your claims. You also have to show the financial viability of your policy. What are your premiums? How much are you gonna pay out? And you have to show that you have sufficient reserves as an insurance company to pay out your claims. When you file the forms, which are the actual content of the policies, the state will review those that ensures that the coverages are appropriate, that they're properly reserved for with money, and the insurer will put money into what's called a guarantee fund to pay claims if one of the insurers goes bankrupt. Once those are filed by the insurance company, the insurer, the agent or broker will sell policies from that company to their insurer. Now be aware that not every insurance company, every insurance agent can just sell any insurance. You have to be appointed or approved by that insurer, the major company, for their market to sell their insurance. But what happens if you are an insurance agent and you have a customer that has a type of risk, a type of business or a type of coverage that's unusual? Maybe it does not have an existing large insurance company that's admitted in their state, an admitted carrier that has filed forms, filed rates, filed policies, to cover that type of loss. Maybe you're an unusual business. I'll make up an example that may not be uh, applicable, but let's say you're a circus and there's no companies that sell circus insurance for your state. Or maybe uh, they do sell circus insurance, but your circus has some weird animals that it's, it's excluded. Well, what would happen is your insurance agent, once they've exhausted searching for admitted carriers in the normal filed market will then look for excess coverage or surplus lines coverage. And there may be other companies that are not officially admitted in the state that have not filed forms in the state for these rare coverages. And it's key to remember that these have to be rare coverages. If it's a common type of coverage, a common type of risk, then you don't need surplus lines insurance. There should be a carrier for that. In fact, before an agent can sell a surplus lines policy, they have to have done due diligence to make sure there's not existing coverage with an admitted filed carrier. And the producer, which is the agent, has to sign off on that. Then they're gonna look for outside coverage, surplus lines coverage. And there's companies that do this. You've probably heard of the syndicate called Lloyd's of London. And Lloyd's of London is kind of a backup insurance company. They do a lot of reinsurance, but they also have some coverages for unique, rare um, risks. It's estimated that surplus lines insurance really shouldn't go above about 10% of the policies that you write because 
if it's that common where it's more than 10% of the time, somebody should be writing coverage for it. So now the producer has found a company that will write this excess surplus lines coverage for your business. Sometimes it's a policy that's already created by an insurance company. Sometimes they'll create a brand new special custom policy for your business. Sometimes, you know, if you're a baseball pitcher and you insure your pitching arm, right, that could be excess and surplus lines. Although that's common enough where there's probably policies for that. Once the producer has found the coverage, they will then write that policy for you as a business. Since these insurers are not licensed in your state, they're not regulated in the same way that the admitted carriers are. Um, they do have to be regulated and licensed in the state where they're located, the insurance company, but not in your state maybe where they're writing coverage. So they're not strictly regulated in your state, so they don't have to have certain rates and forms and things filed, but they do have to accept the risks and you have to sign off on those risks as the insurer saying that you understand it's a surplus line policy which may not be covered under the guarantee fund if they go out of business. There are some state guidelines and federal guidelines for these insurers that write surplus line policies. Um, the producer is required that to, to make sure that the company at least meets those standards. Um, most states, the the producer has to have a separate extra license to sell surplus lines insurance. If you're an insurance agent and licensed to sell commercial lines, you may not be able to sell surplus lines or excess coverage unless you have an endorsement and add on to your license to do that. There are also extra fees you have to pay. Sometimes there's an extra tax that's paid for a surplus lines insurance policy paid to the state. Usually, there's also requirements that the agent verifies that the company writing the insurance is at least up to standards in the state where they're located. There's usually financial monitoring of the surplus lines insurer in the state where they're located. In fact, many surplus lines insurance companies are actually standard markets in their state. It may be a company that has standard coverage in their state. They just don't have that coverage in your state. No, no other company has it. So it's important to double check to make sure that that company is financially sound. Now, keep in mind that the insurance company is not creating this as a surplus line because they're unable to get a license in your state. It's usually because they're choosing not to because there's not enough business. It's not a high volume in your state worthy of getting a license and having all the reserves and having all the regulatory requirements. It's usually not that they're unqualified or they're, you know, what's called a bucket shop where they just can't, they're not financially sound. It's usually that the market in your state may not be big enough for them to file forms and become formally documented in your state. And sometimes these surplus lines companies are actually more financially sound than the regulated carriers because they have to pay more attention to their actuarials to make sure that these risks are properly accounted for. And sometimes, you know, their margins are a little higher because it's a lower volume and they the the risks are a little less documented. So if your company has a risk or a type of loss potential that's not normal, not standard, not high volume, you may see that your insurance agent, your broker, producer, whatever they're called, may be offering you a policy that's referred to as a surplus lines policy or an excess and surplus lines policy. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. You just wanna double check to make sure that there's not an existing filed regulated policy that is available for that risk, which your agent probably will already have determined. You just want to double check. And you may want to find out a little bit about the company to make sure they're financially sound, which just because they're a surplus lines insurance company does not mean that they're not financially sound. They're probably licensed and regulated in their state, just not in your state. 
and to make sure that your agent or broker is also licensed to actually sell a surplus lines policy. They probably wouldn't offer to you unless they are. In fact, sometimes the agent you're dealing with at your brokerage, at your agency, personally might not be licensed, but somebody else in the agency might be. That's why you may find that for that one policy, you have to deal with somebody else in the agency. Normally, Joe Schmo is your agent, but now you have to deal with Sally Smith about this surplus lines policy because they are the producer who holds that excess and surplus lines license. So ENS is not a bad thing. It just means that your company has a unique risk profile or maybe that segment of your coverage is unique and that it requires something a little more customized. It's kind of like a boutique policy that's not standard. There's not a lot of other companies that have the same type of need for risk. So that's an overview of excess and surplus lines. We'd love to hear in the comments what you think about that, any questions you have that we can answer. And look forward to our channel for further descriptions of different commercial lines insurance matters.